I'm like that. At home I have no trophies, cups, nothing. I have other things at home. That's because I don't like to look back on the past. I just don't like it. I'm always focused on the future, on what I still have to do, and on those targets that I want to reach. But Capello's time with the Rossonieri was drawing to a close. Something had been lost. I felt Milan didn't value me as much as they should have after four good years and all the trophies we won. I said, well, I'll win the championship again and then I'll leave. Capello did win the Scudetto again in 1996, but at the end of that season he kept his promise to himself and moved to another giant of the European game. He adapted straight away to the Spanish spirits, with hard work during training and with a big smile when it came to managing the training sessions. I think that his experience in Madrid changed him more than any other experience. I think the best thing I took from that first adventure with Real Madrid that I still hold inside me today is that when I arrived at the club, Everyone who worked there was convinced that it was the best club in the world. Despite that mantra, Real had only won the league once in six years. Capello brought in new players, instilled discipline and spirit, and confidence grew. His first season finished with the La Liga title. Ooh. You end up living with that winning mentality all the time. It envelops you. It makes you more aggressive in the positive sense of the word, more aware and more focused in everything you do. You feel the responsibility. The responsibility of being involved in a project concerning the best and most important side in the world, because every single person around you thinks that way. But I then made my greatest mistake ever in football by agreeing to return to Milan as coach after a phone call from Silvio Berlusconi. That second spell would last just one season. I went back to Milan and found a team that was finished. To take on a job where I couldn't choose the players I wanted or I couldn't make the choices I wanted to go in line with my ideas of playing football was a mistake. The board started buying very young players and they didn't all find their feet immediately. The thing that upsets me most is that all the players I had chosen and signed to perform for us the following year played and then won the title. It was time to take a step back. I took a year's sabbatical from football. I went around the world. I worked as a TV pundit. I watched a lot of football and tried to improve my knowledge of the game. And that helped me when I came back and managed Roma. It was a club that needed a complete restructuring, including the whole mindset of the place. You have to realize that you can only create a style of playing the game with what you have at hand, even if it means going against your philosophy and way of thinking. It's more important what you can bring to the players and team. I think that way brings you victories. He was phenomenal in that sense. He was able to isolate the group, to make the team feel great and professional, he was a great strategist at Roma. Capello took over at former club Roma in 1999, finishing sixth in his first season. But he knew what was needed to make the next step, and in 2000 signed Argentinian striker Gabriel Batistuta. I chose Roma simply because I saw they were the team in the best position to become champions. I moved there and was lucky. I didn't have long left, probably two years at the top. 
In terms of my career, I couldn't have made a mistake at that age. But it went well. We won, and it's history. Roma has only ever won two titles, and the last one was 18 years earlier. For most people, it was out of the question that Roma could win. Few people had bet on Roma, but we showed we could do it, and we won. Roma and Batistuta were unstoppable. Capello had now masterminded title success in Milan, Madrid and Rome. To win with Roma as he did represents something special. Only someone that has been there, someone that has managed the team, can really comprehend what it means and what the people of this city make you feel. However, in Italy's capital, Capello's never-look-back philosophy fell on deaf ears. One thing I couldn't cope with was the continual celebrations for at least six months after we won the title. I'd say, it means nothing, we have to move forward. But that euphoria and party atmosphere is infectious, whether you like it or not, even though you're trying to focus on your job. Anything you have already done counts for nothing. You have to look to the future. You have to look towards tomorrow. You have to focus on your next objective. Capello did win the Supercoppa Italia in 2001, but nothing further was added. In 2004, he decided it was time to move to another of the clubs he'd once played for. Juventus. I went to Juventus because after five years at Roma, I realized that the team didn't really follow my orders anymore. It's always your philosophy that defines your methods. Sometimes, subconsciously, it becomes repetitive. The players begin to think, it's always the same old thing, and they therefore lose that spirit of spontaneity that you need to become a winner. As a player, Capello had won three titles at Juventus, playing alongside the likes of Roberto Bettega. Fabio was a very intelligent player. He knew how to score goals, and he was good in the air. More than 30 years later, Bettega was on the board of directors at Juventus, who made Capello their coach. It was an obvious decision to make. He was a great manager that had the same drive we had in wanting to win. And we won two league titles, and he behaved as a manager like he did on the pitch. Very strict, very knowledgeable and demanding. And he had a great squad. However, the two titles would be stripped from Juventus. A match-fixing scandal found that they were among several clubs that bribed referees to get results. We won them absolutely. We won them on the pitch. There was no one stronger than us. It was nothing to do with refereeing decisions or anything like that. We were all shocked when it came out in the papers. Despite the scandal, Capello's reputation remained intact, and Real Madrid came calling for a second time. This was the era of the Galacticos. But it had been three years since they had won La Liga. And back in Madrid, Capello struggled. It was a difficult time, so much so that I even spoke to the president and said, I take the blame and have no issues if you want to sack me. We were about nine points off the lead, eight or nine points behind Barcelona, who were in first.